It's Friday, March 18th, and it's time for your happy yesterday morning news update. Time is running out for a final decision on the terms and conditions under which this year's Crapover Festival will be held. Veteran band leader Chetwin Stewart tells Barbados today if firm decisions are not made by the end of this month, his band may be forced to pull the plug on any plans for this year's grand gadoomant. He says while some of the proposals placed on the table during talks with the National Cultural Foundation and other stakeholders are quite feasible, Band leaders are reluctant to make the major investments needed to pull off the event without important assurances from the authorities. We are just being given the go ahead to do something like a grand tournament. By the end of the day, the band leaders have to take the risk. So until things are finalized, band leaders would not know if they take the risk or not. Now, the issue that we have right now is this time. Because if you're doing Kaduma, you want what we call pretty mass. And pretty mass does not come cheap. So I can only talk like, from a band leader before, but for example, for all band leaders. So for us, we are not going to risk $300,000 or to be know that we get something that we can sell to our patrons. And that it makes sense. And it's got to what, as I said, it's a risk. So I know they have been talked, so yeah, I've heard the talks have been going very well. But it not, has not been finalized yet. So things are being put out there that can be sounds possible and sounds that could make you go work. But we haven't got the final thing. And the danger is in not getting it as soon as possible is that the longer we get to finalize it, the shorter the time the body that have to make costumes or to take that risk. Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw has given teachers top marks for their work over the last two years, which was primarily conducted online. She commended the teachers for their service over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, adding that they have been sacrificing personal time for the benefit of students. The teachers have performed commendably over the two years of the pandemic. They have be nimble in making that shift from face to face to online. Many of them have pursued training at the Erdison Teachers Training College to ensure that the quality of the education that our children receive is maintained. I cannot in good conscience condone any comments that condemn the teachers of Barbados. Countries must improve the fall in coverage of other vaccines even as they continue to expand COVID vaccine mandates. That's according to Assistant Director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Jabras Babosa. Speaking during PAO's weekly press conference, Dr. Barbosa said health systems have been concentrating on the response to the pandemic, but they also need to maintain their focus on routine immunization, which prevents other serious diseases and save lives. Vaccine coverage for polio, measles and rubella, diphtheria, and other childhood diseases had been falling even before COVID struck. The heavy impact of the pandemic only made this worse. In two years, we've rolled back nearly three decades of progress on polio and measles, putting us back to the same vaccination level, levels we had in 1994. In parts of Brazil, we had ongoing outbreaks of measles, a disease our region had once eliminated despite the great efforts that the country is making to interrupt the circulation of measles. And once pervasive diseases, such as diphtheria and the yellow fever, threaten to resurge unless we act quickly. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Pure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more.
It is hard. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. The news from the region now. All measures under Jamaica's Disaster Risk Management Act have been lifted effective today. The measures were put in place to limit the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement in Parliament on Thursday. The order and all the measures therein under the Disaster Risk Management Act will be withdrawn. While we acknowledge that the pandemic is not over, it must be mainstreamed into the general normal management of public health, safety, and public order. It is no longer sustainable to manage the pandemic as a special project by executive order through the Disaster Risk Management Act. However, risks still remain and continued vigilance is necessary, especially for vulnerable populations. For this reason, some measures will be retained and incorporated into regulations issued under the Public Health Act. Instead, these are, one, the requirement for persons who test positive to isolate, the requirement for laboratories to protect the privacy and identity of persons testing uh, for COVID-19, hand-washing and sanitizing measures, and four, mask-wearing in enclosed spaces to which the public has access, for example, supermarkets, banks, collectorate of taxes, will be retained until April 15, 2022. And finally, on the international front. The International Monetary Fund says the war in Ukraine will overshadow the still incomplete economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. According to reports, the IMF is assessing the magnitude of the impact of the war on the economic growth in the region, with the main channels of shock expected to be fourfold, that is energy prices and other supply disruptions, financial conditions, confidence and migration. The IMF's head of communications department, Jerry Rice, says the fund is working to support several members' needs for financing and support programs in the near future. Donors have expressed interest for the fund to establish and administer a vehicle, a financing vehicle, uh, through which they can channel their resources to support Ukraine. So we are currently exploring the creation of again what we call this IMF administered account that would allow interested donors to pool and to channel resources, loans and or grants to assist Ukraine in meeting the extraordinary balance of payments and budget needs arising from the war while supporting uh, macroeconomic uh, stability. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.